welcome to this second lecture on concept of image impedance. Now, I hope you agree with me that any two port network can always be represented by either a T section or a pi section. Without losing generality, I take that my two port network that means, that every who transmission line parameter character uh, transmission matrix characterization is A B C D that is a T section. The same analysis holds for a pi section. So, now I have that T section this is z 1, this is z 2, this is z 3 all these are impedances complex impedances. So, this is my port 2, this is my port 1, this is the internal description of the network. Now, I want that when I will excite the port 1 with that voltage V s and I have some internal impedance. Let us call that internal impedance Z i 1. Last time I called it Z s, this time I am calling it Z i 1, it is simply change of nomenclature. So, this is my port 1, this is my port 2. Now, you see all of you are familiar with maximum power transfer theorem. Maximum power transfer theorem says that if the load impedance is a complex conjugate of the source impedance, then maximum power gets transferred. I think you have noticed that in low frequency, particularly these VLSI people etcetera, when they work up to gigahertz range, they do not give any consideration to this maximum power transfer theorem. Because in base band, unless you go up to radio frequency and transmit it, you have plenty of power. So, you are more concerned with your voltage maximization. That is why you design a good C amplifier with very high voltage gain, but voltage gain does not necessarily mean maximum power gain. But we, when we go to radio frequency, we know power microwave power is very precious to produce microwave power lots of complex complicated circuits are required. So, also when power is received by a receiver in radio frequency, it is very small amount. So, it is life and death for RF engineers or RF circuits to maximize power. So, maximum power transfer theorem always is the in the design of RF circuits always we try to pay regard to the maximum power transfer theorem. So, can I have this whole thing suppose this I will terminate by some load impedance let that load impedance is called Z i 2 this one I call Z i 1 source impedance this is Z i 2. Now, the idea of image impedance is at this point obviously, if I look at I will get some impedance. Now, if this impedance is equal to Z i 1, then I can from the source I can have maximum power transfer. Okay. Now, according to maximum power transfer, I suppose this I am looking at some Z in or something Z in. Now, if Z i is complex conjugate of Z i 1 star then I know that maximum power transfer will take place. But as I said that our consideration now is filter which is lossless network. So, this Z 1, Z 2, Z 3 there is no R involved here ideally. So, they are complex, but they are generally they will be either real or not real either all of them will be pure imaginary term, they will be pure reactances. 
So, in that case I say that now I say that I will look into here at z i 1, then z i 1 is equal to z i 1 not complex not nest, suppose any complex conjugate for pure imaginary things it is equal. As you know that suppose I have two complex number a is equal to b star. Suppose a is a complex number, b is a complex number. If a is pure real and b is pure real, then I can say a is equal to b. Similarly, if a is pure imaginary and b is pure imaginary, then only I can say a is equal to b. Since we know that this will be my all these are pure reactances, this may be a pure resistance. So, that is why I can call that my demand is z i 1 here should be equal to z i 1 here. That means, source impedance and this input impedance looking at this port should be equal, but you see this z i 1 is a function of this load resistance z i 2. But now, so why it is called this z i 1 is called image impedance. If I can find an impedance load impedance z i 2, so that if I terminate this network this is already given network and I look at here and see that the input impedance is z i 1, then I know that I can transfer maximum power from this source to this network this to this port 1 of this network. Now, why z i, z I 1 is called an image impedance? Because if at this plane I look, so I looking at this side I am getting to the right side I am getting an z i 1 looking at left side I am seeing the impedance as z i 1. So, the this side is an image of this that is why this is an image impedance. It, so, z i 1 is an image impedance. Same thing here that in here I want that if I look at here I should look at some output impedance that should be equal to z i 2. So, at port 2, if I look to this side I am getting z i 2, if I look to this side I should get z i 2. So, if I can find this pair z i 1, z i 2, so that if I terminate by z i 2, then I get here z i 1 impedance. Similarly, here if I terminate by z i 1 and excite here, I should see here a z i 2. These two pairs are called image impedance. Since this is an asymmetrical network because z 1 is not equal to z 2, I will have two impedance z i 1 and z i 2. Let us see that whether this image impedance can be represented in terms of this impedance of this network. So, the same diagram I can write that z i 1 or do like this. So, this z i 1 I can write as what is z i 1? Obviously, it is z 1 plus you see z 3 parallel to z 2 plus z i 2. Likewise, what is z i 2? It is z 2 plus z 3 parallel to z 1 plus z i 1. Now, these two equations you see z i 1 here I have z i 2, I have z i 2 here I have z i 1, I have two equations. So, I can solve for z i 1 and z i 2 in terms of z 1, z 2, z 3. If I do that upon solving this I get z i 1 is equal to root over z 1 plus z 3 into 
z 1 z 2 plus z 2 z 3 plus z 3 z 1 by z 2 plus z 3 and z i 2 is z 2 plus z 3 into z 1 z 2 plus z 2 z 3 plus z 3 z 1. So, you see that this image impedances can be represented in terms of the component impedances of the T section. Now, always we would not be knowing z 1, z 2, z 3 as I said that let us consider two port network as a black box, but we can do measurements and always find these image impedances. How? You know that any measurement requires either an open circuit or short circuit of the one of the ports. So, for any impedance measurement you need to do this. Also, you have seen that if you want to find any two port parameter, you need to have some port condition either short, open etcetera, etcetera. So, if we measure measurement of image impedance, let us say that one port 1 we measure impedance when port 2 open. We call that measurement as z 1 since we are doing at port 1 open circuit. Z 1 O C means I am measuring the impedance input impedance at port 1 with port 2 open. So, if we look at the circuit, if I open circuit this what will be Z 1 O C? It will be simply Z 1 plus Z 3. Similarly, if we measure impedance at port 2 with uh, sorry the is in, uh, again port 1 measure impedance when port 2 is shorted. Now, let me short this port. So, I call Z 1 S C second port is shorted you look at the circuit if I short it it will be Z 1 plus Z 2 Z 3 parallel. So, z 1 plus z 2 parallel z 3. Okay. Now, what is this? This is z 1 z 2 plus z 2 z 3 plus z 3 z 1 by z 2 plus z 3. Now, you observe the image impedance terms already I have solved z i 1. Can I just compare? Can I say that z i 1 is equal to z 1 o c into z 1 s c. So, by measurement I can always find z 1 o c, I can find z 1 s c, I know what is the image impedance immediately I can calculate from this. Similarly, instead of port 1 if I measure in port 2 by once open circuiting port 1 find the input impedance at port 2 and then again you short the port 1 and measure the input impedance and port 2. So, port 2 things if we do you will see the same thing that z i 2 can be expressed as z 2 o c into z 2 s c. So, this shows that in image impedances can be always obtained from short or open circuit measurements on any network. So,
So, we can easily do this suppose I am given a network I can always find this z 1 OC, z 1 SC, z 2 OC, z 2 SC and find out this z i 1 and z i 2 and then accordingly I choose a source with that internal impedance z i 1 and terminate the or choose the load as z i 2 I know I can achieve maximum power transfer. Already I said so that means, I can have maximum power transfer is guaranteed if I use image impedance as the terminating impedance at both the ports. Now, now we know we have said that we will be using the two port network as only lossless net components that means, we would not use any R. So, there would not be any internal loss there. So, by terminating with image impedances, I assume maximum power transfer, no loss in the circuit, lossless. So, image impedance is an important thing, a performance measure of the power transport power transmission that is taking place to a network. So, you see that we can specify something on it later when we will design a filter. So, instead of A B C D we can specify image impedances and that will solve one many of our problem, but think one point that I have image impedance here, I have image impedance here. Also you see with this I required to know that ok, I by this z, z i 1 and z i 2 terminations z i 1 here, z 2 here, I have ensured that I am giving maximum power I am delivering to this load, but I am assuming that here there is no loss but the power is flowing in this direction. It may so happen since I am using reactive elements power may be locally confined that is not flowing there. So, I need to also see how propagation is taking place inside this two port network. So, we need to have the transmission of power through the network also that we will next see that this is called propagation of power. So, what we define that again two port network I have this V 1, I have V 2, I have I 1, I have I 2 as before. Now, let me define V 1 I 1 by V 2 I 2. V i is volt ampere the concept you have learnt in your electrical circuit class. So, input volt ampere these are complex quantities input volt ampere and output volt ampere what is the what is this ratio that will be something. Now, I want to ensure that that is fully making the power transmission possible. So, we call this I can name it any number this will be some number you see input by output volt ampere, but we have certain advantage if we instead of defining any number here we write it as some exponential factor e to the power 2 gamma. Why? Because you see when I will cascade many such networks this one will have some this ratio e to the power 2 gamma 1, this will have e to the power 2 gamma 2, another will have e to the power 2 gamma 3 etcetera. Now, from this input to this input if I want to find what is this transmission ratio of 
volt ampere, if I express it in exponential factors, the final thing will be e to the power 2 gamma 1 plus 2 gamma 2 plus 2 gamma 3. But if I do not use this exponential factor, if I just write it as gamma, suppose, then it will I will have to work out and I will have to find out what is the magnitude and phase all these things here. But exponential factor makes simply this is an addition in if it is an absolute value it would have been some multiplication. We always prefer addition to multiplication that is why it initially people did like that they put this as propagation constant, but now with after some learning people understood that if we represent this ratio as it exponential factor and also you see I have taken a factor 2 here. Why? Because many times we will be interested to see what is the voltage ratio, what is the current ratio, but this is actually a volt ampere ratio which is for that it is actually product of voltage and current. So, I have taken 2 gamma. This gamma is called propagation constant. So, what is the definition of propagation constant? You see gamma is equal to half l n v 1 i 1 by v 2 i 2, a very very important definition. Propagation constant you see it shows that how input power is propagating through the network inside the two port network. So, my job is now to find out what is this e to the power 2 gamma ratio is equal to v 1 i 1 by v 2 i 2 is equal to in terms of ABCD parameter a v 2 plus b i 2 into c v 2 plus d i 2 by v 2 i 2. Also I know v 2 is equal to z i 2 i image impedance it is terminated with image impedances. So, if you do that finally, you can solve that this ratio will turn out to be this simple manipulation put this and you know the values of z i 1 z i 2. So, you will get this will be simply this or e to the power gamma is equal to root a d plus root b c. Now, here you see this propagation constant I have expressed in terms of A, B, C, D parameter. One more thing is remaining I have already said about characteristic impedances is characteristic impedance also expressible in terms of A, B, C, D parameter. Let us see I have the same two port network I have I 1 here I have V 1 here and I 1 that this should be z i 1 and here this should be terminated by z i 2 and this is v 2, this is my i 2. So, I can write I know this is a b c d. So, v 1 i 1 is equal to a b c d the definition of transmission parameters. Also I have V 2 is equal to I 2 z I 2 and V 1 is equal to I 1 z I 1. So, put these equations and find out what is z I 1 you will see you will get A z I 2 plus B by C z I 2 plus d. Let me call this for time being equation 1. Now, reverse the picture that same transmission line this time I am putting the excitation here. So, I am looking at it here I will get z i 2 and this is my V 2 dashed as before, this is my I 2 dashed as before and 
from here I am taking terminating it with z i 1, this is my v 1 dashed, this is my i 1 dashed. So, here again I can write that v 1 dashed i 1 dashed is equal to a b c d v 2 dashed minus i 2 dashed and what about the ports v 1 dashed is equal to z i 1 i 1 dashed v 2 dashed is equal to z i 2 i 2 dashed. Then find out that what is your z i 2. So, or you find out what is your z i 1 which is nothing but v 1 dashed by i 1 dashed that will turn out to be a z i 2 minus b by minus c z i 2 plus d. So, this let me call equation 2, you have equation 1, you have equation 2 solve for z i 1. If you solve you will, so from 1 and 2 you can solve for z i 1 and that will be equal to or z i 1 will be equal to uh, z i 1 will be equal to a b by c d and z i 2 will be equal to root over b d by a c. Now, I am happy, because I know that z i 1, the one of the image impedance can be expressed in terms of 4 a b c d parameters, z i 2 also I can express in terms of a b c d parameters and I have already seen that propagation constant gamma, you see this propagation constant that also I can express in terms of a b c d parameters. a b c d parameters completely characterizes a two port network, I say equivalently I can say two image impedances z i 1, z i 2 and e to the or and gamma these three also characterizes a network. But what is the beauty? If I have z 1, z i 2, I know what is the impedance level of the excitations of the network. That means, what is the source impedance, what is the load impedance, they are according to the power matching. So, that no maximum power sorry, they are according to the maximum power transfer. So, power will flow and by putting conditions in gamma, I will be able to say whether this frequency will pass or not. So, instead of a b c d parameters, this is a better description of a two port network if I want to design a filter. And already I have seen that I can that I can uh, do the So, I can do the measurement of image impedances that time I said in terms of the by opening and shorting the port, I will also have to prove that I can do this for propagation constant also, because this is a new thing that time I did not say this. So, that I will do now that measurement of image impedance and propagation constant. So, what we will do? the same network, this is port 2, this is open circuit and I am looking here at let me call this z o 1. So, I know v 1 is equal to a v 2 plus b i 2, i 1 is equal to c v 2 plus d i 2 etcetera and open circuit means i 2 is equal to 0 
So, if you enforce that this z o 1 that will be a by c, then you short circuit. So, or open circuit this port, the first port you open circuit and measure here z o 2. So, z o 2 that will turn out to be d by c, then you do that short circuit port 1 and measure the from this port you measure z s 2, you will see z s 2 will turn out to be b by a and which one I missed z s 2, uh, z s 1, z s. So, you short circuit this port and measure here z s 1, z s 1 will be b by d. Once you have that, you can immediately write because already we have seen z i 1 is equal to the z o 1 into z o 2 etcetera. So, you will get that this is equal to a b by c d and that is nothing but z o 1 z s 1. Similarly, z i 2 is equal to root over b d by a c and that is d by c into b by a and that is nothing but z o 2 z s 2 and you see what is tan gamma tan hyperbolic gamma all of you are familiar with hyperbolic functions. So, this is e to the power gamma minus e to the power minus gamma by e to the power gamma plus e to and that is nothing but b c by a d that is z s 1 by z o 1 and or z s 2 by z o 2. So, you see that gamma can be expressed completely in terms of short circuit and open circuit measurements. So, I can measure image impedances by open circuit short circuit measurements, I can also measure gamma by open circuit short circuit measurement. Previously, I showed that z i 1, z i 2 and gamma they completely characterizes as network reciprocal to port network. Now, I have shown that they also can be measured. So, you do not have any difficulty any two port reciprocal network lossless network you can represent like this. So, an alternate description or characterization of two port network is in terms of z i 1, z i 2 and gamma. I think in the next class, we will introduce another criteria called symmetrical network and we will simplify this procedure. Thank you.